I am just very uh, grateful to have the opportunity to ask you a question today. Uh, my question for you, Sadhguru, is do you in the Indian culture have a, a dance that is also considered a medicine dance or, um, you know, do you guys consider dance to be uh, something that can have healing properties to it? So thank you so much and uh, have a safe journey. Namaskaram, Michelle. Wonderful to be talking to you, the dancer. <laughs> I must tell you this, uh, my daughter who is thirty now, just turned thirty, she is a classical, Indian classical dancer. It's a very intricate and sophisticated form of dance, which largely at one time evolved in the temples of India as a form of worship, as a form of offering, but today it is also being done on stage. So, are Indian dancers in some way connected to our spirituality? Are Indian dancers in some way healing? or signify something more than just entertainment, one hundred percent, because all the dancers, the classical dancers in India, do not tre treat dance as an entertainment process, it is treated as a sacred duty and a sacred process. Well, it's very different from uh, what you have here, but uh, very, very sophisticated uh, way of uh, movements and offerings and very complex stories being depicted through the dance. So I would like to send you some videos so that you can acquaint yourself with that or you can look it up anyway on the net. Having said that, <laughs> I want you to uh, know this that in India, all our gods, all the gods who are worshipped are all dancing gods. If uh, they cannot dance, we do not consider them gods. <laughs> How's that for you? <laughs> because Dance is about the exuberance of your physical form. If your life energies, if your body is in an exuberant way, it will naturally dance. What kind of dance may be cultural, but essentially dance is an outpouring of human exuberance. Where there is no outpouring of life, uh, how can you be... how can such a entity uh, qualify as God? So all our gods are dancing gods, so it is very much deeply embedded in our culture. But when we say India, it is not like one thing. India is a vast country, it had over nineteen thousand languages at one time. Every few kilometers you drive, you will see people look different, eat different, dress different, their culture is different, their music and dance is different. So we... We are also struggling as to how to preserve all these things because it's too complex and too elaborate. But uh, today, quite a few forms are very well, uh, you know, very much in practice, lot of youth taking to it. And it is on stage, it is being attended by people, people even pay to watch these dances. So, uh, there is a whole revival of that in this generation. Mm, it's very important to understand that if uh, your body refuses to dance, it's not about whether you can dance or not, it simply is a question of uh, do you have life energy spilling out of you or no? Are you an overflow of life energies or are you a depleted life? So bringing uh, this dimension that we call as dance into... in a way... at a very early age can be very wonderful to bring balance to children as they grow up because whatever talents, whatever competences we have, competencies we have and uh, whatever genius that is there in every human being can unfold only if there is balance and dance is a test of your balance in many ways. I'm not just saying physical balance, your inner balance also is determined when you're not balanced, you cannot dance. 
So, uh, this is very important for every culture, it must be brought back. And it's great that you're bringing back uh, the Native American dances and I just saw a small video of yours. I wish we had met, sometime you must come here to our center in Tennessee and perform. It'll be wonderful to see you dancing. Uh, <laughs> I saw with all those heavy bells, it must be quite a effort to do that, but you're doing great. Congratulations and uh, my blessings to you. Let this culture live. India is the only place where our gods must dance. If he cannot dance, he cannot be a god. Shiva is Nataraja, he is the king of dancers and everybody else is a dancer. Why this is, is because the phenomena of creation, the closest analogy you can give to that is it's like a dance. Today modern physicists are using those words that things seem to be in a dance. Dance means there seems to be no logical coherence to it, but if you observe it closely enough, there is a very deep system to the whole process. This dance of creation, which self-created itself from the eternal stillness, in trying to represent the exuberance of creation, we call this dimension as Natesha or Nataraja, which is one of the most significant forms of Shiva. Because creation is a dance, we said the divine is a dancer. So when we say Shiva is not a Raja, we are not talking about an individual dancing. That is why the circle around him. The circle is always the symbol of cosmos because the most natural form that happens in the existence when anything moves is a circle. Anything that happens by itself is a circle. The planet is a circle, the moon is a circle, the sun is a circle, everything else is a circle because circle is a shape of least resistance. So that is why the circle around Nataraja is symbolizing the cosmos. He is a cosmic dancer, that's how he's always described. You can experience the dance or you can become the dance. You can experience the aesthetic of the dance by simply watching it closely or you can dance. But you want to understand the dance, there is no such thing. These are only two choices you have. If you experience the beauty, of the dance, by observation, by looking, we will say you are a seeker. You may be called a scientist, but still you are a seeker, you want to know what it is, so you are paying attention. If you pay attention to it, you become a seeker. If you become the dance, you become the divine, you become a yogi. That's a choice you have.